Ooh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is the host of the Fight Gun Fight channel, and yeah, I know, content has been lacking. Lord, do I know. It's my own fault. Um, <laughs> I've been playing Zero Escape again, and that's and that takes me away from everything. Like, I've got Zero Time Dilemma sitting on my 3DS since it came out a couple of months ago. And Smart Me went, mm, well, before I start this, I want 999 and I want Virtue's Last Reward fresh in my head. So I'm currently um, going through Virtue's Last Reward. <laughs> um, and, oh my, Jesus Christ, I, I've forgotten th so much about the two games right i remember the basic points and the cliff notes and that sort of thing but there's so much even between the two games that i'd forgotten and it's, it's making me fall in love with the whole, with the zero escape series all over again i'm so excited to get through virtue's last reward and then play zero time dilemma now, when I when I did the demo of the when I recorded the Phoenix Wright demo, I'd been thinking about this for a while, thinking about doing something similar with Zero Escape, and um, I wanted to, but what stopped me was the format of the games. God, they take forever. Like, because it is... They're, they're visual novel games with p puzzles uh, in between. The puzzles wouldn't be so bad, but the story elements can go on for forever. And then... The updated re-release gets announced. As you've seen the trailer I put up. Uh, there, zero. Uh, the zero escape. The first two zero escape games, nine hours, nine persons, nine doors, and Virtue's Last Reward, are getting PS4 and Steam releases as well as PS Vita. But I don't have a Vita anymore. I don't have a PS4 anymore either. But <laughs> that one is easily re re remediable. Uh, as is getting the Steam versions. Now, I don't imagine them to be too um, hardware stressing. So what I'm imagining is I may stream at some point the entirety of the Zero Escape series when those re-releases come out. Zero Time Dilemma. I currently have it on 3DS and I haven't played it yet. It is also currently on Steam. And when, I, when I've finished it on 3DS, I more than likely will double dip and see how it plays on the PC. I don't believe Zero Time's Limit is on PS4, however. So getting the first two and then not having a way of streaming the third one is not an idea I like. So what I want to do is get Zero Time Dilemma, see how that plays on my PC, because my PC is a couple of years old. Um, should be okay, though. And um, then get the Nonary games. And the great thing about the Nonary games is it's fully voice acted, and all the artwork has been brought up. Uh, it's, it's all been redone and brought up scale. Sort of like the Phoenix Wright HD trilogy. Like if you look at the Game Boy Advance and then you look at the DS versions and then you look at the iPhone versions and then the 3DS versions. You know, this did that gradual scale, but they've just gone. They've just brought the they've just brought the artwork up immediately to PC standards. So that'll be nice. Plus voice acting means I won't have to put on any voices. Um, sad though, because I, I like Junpei too much as a character that I'd have been okay with, you know, giving Junpei a voice. Um, but 
from what the Axis Twitters have been showing off of the voice work so far, um, they sound great. Like, Virtue's Last Reward, when it was released in Europe, it only got the Japanese dub track. Rising Star Games couldn't get the licensing for the English track. Um, and I don't blame them, like, because the first game, 999, 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors, was never released in Europe. So, financially for Rising Star Games, Virtue's Last Reward was going to be a niche game to start, but it's a sequel to a game that the continent never got, so would it have been worth the money to invest in and get the English dubbing? You know, probably not. But now I'm conflicted on whether I want to play Zero Time Dilemma in English or Japanese. <laughs> um, but you know, I'll I'll cross that you know I'll uh, I'll cross that bridge when I get to that timeline. So that's one thing. Um, Appmon episodes four, five, six, and seven. Oh boy. My excitement to do the initial reactions. Oh my god. Episode four was nice and cute. Um, you know, it was the, it was a Halloween episode, and it was, you know, it was okay. It wasn't great, but seeing Do Gatchmon uh, go against an app fused cameraman was pretty cool. Um, and then just when you think that cameraman is now on their team. His uh, app chip gets stolen back by Leviathan or somebody else. And then we see this uh, humanoid humanoid monster girl called Minumon, I think her name is. Um, they've made her all sorts of moe. So, um, I don't know what base they're trying to appeal to with her, but the episode overall was just... You know, it was it was just fun and silly. And then we've and we've met um then we met Aerie, the pink haired the pink haired girl, and her partner Dokemon. And um they fought against a Appmon version of Garbagemon. I don't even remember its name. Gokimon or Go? I think it began with a G. It wasn't Gar. It was, it was something else. Go Go G O K I, I think. I'm trying to remember off memory now just to talk about it, but it's just kind of yeah, you know, whatever. Um, but I like Eri and I actually like Dokemon, even though Dokemon looks like some sort of mishmash between Mach Gaugamon, Vimon, and Gumdramon. I kind of like his character. He's almost like Gumdramon done right. Like, he's definitely the Gumdramon to Gatchmon's Shoutmon. That much is painfully clear. And Eri, her... her idol persona contrasting her real-life persona is kind of nice. But, and this is a problem with the other character that was introduced, Astra. I do not like the Astra character, and I don't like Musimon. His partner, Musimon, I just, I, I don't, I don't like them. They're introduced in this episode that, you know, kind of piss takes on the YouTuber scene and how People can get uh, internet famous for doing stupid, the stupidest of things. But it's the, the catchphrases of the, will I, won't I, should I? Like, if you watch it, it's the most annoying catchphrase ever. And the two of them between themselves are just... I thought Gatchmon was bad and never shut up. These two... Oh, God. But not only that, the episode throws a crap ton of 
sympathetic character backstory that makes you, you know, feel for Astra. But it's so out of place. It's just... And they're also, they're fighting against the Appmon version of Clockmon, which, oh, you, you ready for this? The, the imaginative naming here? Watchmon. The Appmon version of uh, Clockmon. And he does pretty much the same thing that Messemon did to Haru in the first episode with, um, you know, showing embarrassing seeing embarrass and uh, language words fgf i can do this embarrassing scenes of haru when he was younger and that's what leads into his whole backstory and it's like ah oh, his backstory yeah okay but why are we getting this now why is his backstory not being held off in such a high amount until later on in the show when he needs it for an app fusion or you know has lost faith in himself or you know just for character build we don't need to get the character we don't need to get their motivations and backstory and aspirations and goals all crunched into a 20 minute episode and aries episodes did that as well um but i feel hers were a lot more paced because she got episodes five and six so it wasn't so bad where Astra got everything cramped into the one episode and it was just, eh, you know, just, okay. That's horrible. It's not horrible. I just, I don't like the characters and I just think it was, I wasn't given enough time to grow to like the character. I think if they'd have paced out all that information through the show i'd have grown to like him but what they did was just throw it all at you at once and it's just uh oh, and he still um and i said this during the initial reveal um in one of my earlier videos he still looks like a rejected beyblade character it's like he looks like a rejected uh, design for Max from Beyblade, I think. Or a friend of mine look, says he looks like a rejected design for someone from... Uh, uh, from uh, What's that other... Not in Vanguard, uh, Buddy Fight or whatever. Uh, Yami JK, you know, who you guys, long-time viewers, will know from my old streams uh she thinks he looks like a rejected buddy fight character so you know and, and maybe it's me i don't know his his whole it's not just his whole character design but even his face it doesn't look like it belongs in the show it looks so far apart from everybody else it looks like he was taken from a different anime and just inserted into uh into apmon I'm starting to have a gripe with Appmon as well for having uh, two intros. You know, the the whole previously on Appmon thing, leading into the opening five minutes, leading into what is basically previously on Appmon again, because it tells you the plot for like a second time. Then you get the opening theme, and then you get the actual episode. We don't need a plot summary twice in the space of five minutes. Not even the kids that this is being aimed at are that stupid, I would hope. So if they could cut back on that, fantastic. Um, so what else? Yeah, so I, the, I was at the last Ertacon a couple of weeks ago. That was that was kind of fun. I was there as a trader helping out... Um, helping, helping out a buddy of mine sell props that he makes... So, you know, if you're uh, looking for any sort of cosplay prop, he's your guy. Um, I'll link down below uh, at the. Mo <laughs> well, 
and I'll pr- what I mean is I'll probably have to go back into the video e- later on and edit it in. Because at the moment, speaking of conventions, um, I'm actually getting ready to leave. I've got a taxi due to show up in about half an hour. Um, so it'll be, I'll be well on my way to the airport by the time you guys get this. But um, I'm going to Birmingham for the weekend for MCM Birmingham. I'm going to meet up with some friends I haven't seen in a long, long time. And... Yeah, it's just, it's just going to be fun. Get there Friday, check into my hotel, go into Birmingham town, just putter around a bit, meet up with friends and maybe grab pizza, and then Saturday's the convention. So I'll be sure to get a bunch of photos, but uh, also maybe I'll, tr- maybe I'll try and record one or two videos while I'm there and um, and post them up then when I get home you know just to show you to show off for you guys but you know we'll see how that goes um yeah so being a, a trader for Ertacon was pretty cool we were sort of we were just in the we were down the back of the trade hall for the entire weekend and man it was busy like the guy who runs it, uh, the buddy of mine, so good at what he does, so good. Um, but like there was like four or five of us behind because we were we were selling his props and um, different, you know, n- n- gimmicky or you know anime or, or you know pop culture based necklaces and pocket watches and that sort of stuff and. The guys next to the guys next to us were sell were basically selling stuff that they wanted to get rid of. So there was old Final Fantasy figures, and there was um, rakes of bundled manga, and it was just really fun, bantery, um, just just right banter. And it was great, great fun. So cosplay props era. You should look them up on Facebook and. You know, they're very responsive to messages and usually able to quote a price and organize shipping and and that sort of thing. If you're within Ireland, I should pump the brakes on that. I can't guarantee anything outside of our own country. You know, that's at his discretion. But if you're an Irish con goer looking for a prop, then he's definitely your guy. Um, so as I said, I've got a taxi coming along in half an hour to take me to the airport. So I'm going to wrap this up here. I just sort of wanted to uh, rave about the Nonary games, uh, since that's where my head is. Between that, Pokemon Yellow, <laughs> um, and um, Animal Crossing New Leaf. You know, um, I've just been finding myself with these old games. Played through Devil's Third. Uh, recently as well and it's not a horrible game it's very serviceable it's ending is terrible and maybe i'll do a a proper rant and review on that at a later stage but i yeah you know i enjoyed it i knew what i was getting into you know even from the initial trailers when i seen it i was like i know what i'm getting into when i eventually play it didn't think it would take me this long to play it but you know say la vie um played it sold it you know it was fine uh never got to try the online but then again i'm not really an online person you know i kind of like just being able to experience the story and sort of move on and if i'll go back you know um wonderful 101 i downloaded that so i could go back to it um but oh pokemon that reminds me so I'm not going to be around, uh, I'm not going to be online a whole lot over the next couple of days because roaming charges are a bitch. You know, if there's Wi-Fi, I'll try and tap into it, but I won't be on uh, online a whole lot. I swear to God, Europe does not get Pokemon Sun and Moon until next Wednesday. Every other one of you motherfuckers gets it today. 
America, Japan, uh, Asia, you know, continental Asia, Canada. Everywhere but Europe gets it today. If you spoil this for me, I will hunt you down and beat you with Lucille. So, to prevent that, you know, I'm kind of happy to be taking the weekend off. I won't be back in Ireland until Monday night. Um, taking Tuesday off work to recover. And um, even then, I'll be, uh, I won't be back in work till Wednesday. And I it's not like I'll be using the internet at work. So, whether I download it wednesday whether i download it at 12 o'clock on wednesday or i just go to the store afterward and pick moon up yes i'm getting moon uh because the bat i i, I like the bat better than the sun lion i've joked before the sun lion kind of reminds me of um a polymon just on four legs and while i would get it for that because that's hilarious I, will, I don't play video games mostly until night anyway. And the fun thing about Moon being 12 hours ahead. So even though if I'm playing at night the, in the de, in the game, it's going to be daytime. So, I, you know, it's just that works better for me. Which goes against the theme of the game, yes. Um, the sun is always, you know, fire and sun and whatever is always going to look better at night than moonlight is going to look at the daytime. But it just suits me and I think... Um, like, one of my brothers is getting sun, so I'll be able to trade with him and, you know, work that stuff out as we go. But anyway, so, yeah, I'm going to Birmingham now in, well, my flight's at half six. I'm getting the cab early so I can get to the airport, dump my bags at the check-in and go get food. And then go through security. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting there two, three hours early just so I can get food and go through security. Because any, you know, you guys, you know, security at an airport is a bitch. And uh, yeah, you know, it's not for everybody. You know, some people don't mind it. I don't particularly, but it can just be annoying and time consuming and so many people and. Just people are irritated in the line and that travels down and here I am, I'm rambling. So, Birmingham for the next few days, we'll take a lot of pictures, might try and record some video and uh, we'll touch on Appmon again after episode 10. Right, I'm, I'm, that's, at least because that way I'm not committing to doing episodes 8, 9 and 10 initial reactions. Um... We'll touch again on Appmon after episode 10. I will probably end up watching it through. But... Oh my, this is definitely one of the weaker seasons. Um, You know, it, it's definitely one of the weaker seasons so far. But, you know, we'll see how we are at episode 10. And go from there. And the Nonary Games... Let me get Zero Time Dilemma on PC first and see how that runs and if I think I can stream it or see um, or see how 999 runs in the spring. And if I think I can stream that, then yeah, no, definitely, that that's a thing we're going to do. So, until then, until the next video, um, enjoy yourselves, take care, and I will talk to you all very, very soon. And I might have to get I might have to put emphasis on getting the PS4 back soon anyway because the new Digimon game is coming out and mm, well this basically is a Digimon channel. You know, I spy, I try and spruce it up here and there, but primarily we talk about Digimon and maybe Hyrule Warriors on occasion. Uh, but it's it seems to be primarily a Digimon channel. Uh, which is awkward given the name. Yeah, Fight Gun and Fight being a Digimon channel. Nah. I'll worry about that one later. But, um, yeah, um, I'll wrap it up here. I've been saying that for a while, so here we. So this is it. Everyone, have a great morning, great evening, 
great afternoon if I see you at the convention. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Who knows? Um, but I will be back soon, and I'll talk to you all then. Be good to one another. The world is getting crazier out there. So be good to one another, and I'll talk to you all soon. Good night, guys. Ooh.